Hi there, my name is Corey Gaddy, Technical Solutions Consultant for TPM. For Four Minute Friday today, we're going to talk about creating turn lanes with corridors. Okay, so let's get into the software. Okay, so we have this corridor here for this driveway. Okay, this corridor is based upon an alignment. So this guy going down the center of the road, an assembly, and for in this case, we have a two-lane driveway with the sidewalk on each side so that's our assembly and then we also have a profile so this is the profile for that road so right now this corridor only represents two lanes it's got an entrance lane here coming into the site and then it's got an exit lane leaving the site so just two lanes involved there so it doesn't represent this turning lane for this site so we have a right turning lane to exit this site and right now the corridor doesn't incorporate that lane so there's a couple of ways to get that third lane incorporated into the corridor. One way is to actually alter the assembly that's used. So we would need an assembly more like this one, okay, that has that third lane involved in the assembly. So we'd use that third lane assembly and then we create a transition here between the two lanes and the three lanes and build our corridor. There's also another way to get that third lane incorporated into our corridor and that's what we're going to go over in this video. So for this method, we're going to have to split up our corridor into a couple of regions. So I'll go up here to split region. Okay, I'll determine which region I want to be in the center. All right, so that's going to be the transition area. It's going to be one region. Okay, and then I'll need to incorporate another region here, and that's where the corridor is only two lanes. So I'll go ahead and split it at that section as well. Now that we have a couple of different regions, all right, we can set targets for each region. Okay, so I have a feature line that represents the face of the curb here. So I can use that feature line as a target for my region. So I'll click on the corridor, right click, I'll go to modify region, and I'll edit targets for that region. It's going to ask me for the region that I want to edit, so I'll go ahead and click on this region. It'll bring up in this window, and then I can set my target for that region. So that lane is actually going to be the left lane because we're coming into the site, all right, so we'll be looking to the left all right, on our alignment. So I have to use that as my target for the left lane. And then I'm going to go ahead and select that feature line. And I want to have feature line, survey figures, apply lines selected up here. I'll go ahead and select that from the drawing. All right, I'll click on that feature line. All right, hit enter to accept it. You'll see the feature line shows up there. And then I can hit OK. All right, there's my target. And then I'll hit OK again. Okay. So now you'll see that that corridor has now been extended out to the face of the curb. Likewise, for this other region, I can go ahead and click on the corridor, right click, and modify region, and edit the target for that region. It asks me for the region again. I'll go ahead and click on it. And then I'll go back as well to the left lane and make sure I select that feature line for the left lane. So I'll click on select from drawing. I'll locate that feature line, which is here. Click on it, hit enter. It'll bring it into the um, target. And then I'll go ahead and hit OK. There it is. I'll hit OK again. And then now that feature line is a part of the corridor as well as a target. The last thing I want to do is go ahead and update my surface. Okay, so now that surface will represent that extra lane as well as the corridor. I can go ahead and add myself an intersection out here at the road. Okay, just keep in mind that you'll want to have a profile for the road. So we need to have some profile representing this existing road out here. And then you'll also want to have a profile for the driveway, which you already have because we built that corridor based upon that profile. So I just want to make sure I have a profile for the road as well. All right, then I can go up here to home, go to intersections, and create my intersection. It's going to ask me for the intersection point. So I want to go ahead and select the alignment out here in the road where these two alignments come together. That intersection point will be my intersection. 
and then this window will come up and allow me to start designing my intersection. I can give that intersection a name. And then I can go ahead and select the styles that I want for it. And then decide if I want it to be primary road, crown maintained, or all crowns maintained. Okay, I'm going to use all crowns maintained. And then just go through the prompt. My priority is going to be the alignment for the existing road. is going to be uh, the main alignment. And then my driveway will be my secondary alignment. And then I can set my parameters. The offset parameters are going to involve the lane widths. This is looking at the existing road. I have a 36 foot wide road, so I'm going to use 18 feet on each side of that road. My secondary road is the driveway. Okay. On one side of the driveway, I have a 12 foot lane. All right. We're going to be looking into the site to determine these widths. So on the left side, we're actually going to have 24 because we have that turning lane. And then we'll have 12 on the other side. Then we look at our curb return parameters. It's going to look at the radiuses here. All right, you can see the southeast quadrant, which is this guy. We need to determine what our radius should be. It is a 25, so that's good. Our southwest quadrant is going to also be a 25, so we're good there. If we wanted to change our slopes for the design of this intersection, we can go ahead and do it now. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that for this video. We could also change our lane slopes if needed. All right, we'll go through here and we can also at this time go ahead and create ourselves a corridor for the intersection. Okay, or we can add it to an existing corridor. So we could add it to that driveway if we wanted, or we could create ourselves a new one. Okay, we'll go ahead and add it to that driveway. And then we can determine what surface we want to daylight to. So for this case, we're going to daylight to the existing surface. All right. I could apply different assemblies to different regions and so on. I'm not going to worry about that at this time. We should be good to go here. So I'm going to go ahead and create my intersection. And now here we have our intersection out here at the road incorporated into that previous corridor. And then as we did before, we'll have to go ahead and update our surface associated with the driveway. And now you'll see that the intersection is a part of this new surface. That's what I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching.